We're joined now by the political insiders, Republican strategist Charlie Giroux, Democratic strategist Mark Single. Guys, thanks for coming in so late. Good to be here. Um, Charlie, the president in his, in his last rally didn't look like he's wearing out at all. He's amazing. I mean, for a man his age and with the <clears throat> responsibilities of his office upon his shoulders, he just is indefatigable. He's the Energizer Bunny. And most important, Rob, he's in key states tonight. These are Republican takeaway opportunities. They clearly see that there is a path for them there. And, and that's why he's in places like Indiana, and Missouri, and Ohio. I wanted to ask Mark real quick. Uh, we had a little discussion here. You know, but he, he flies on Air Force One I, because he has to. He's the president now. Um, what about tax dollars being spent on these? Well, typically they get reimbursed by the campaigns, but it is expensive. It's what it expensive. does is draws down on the campaign so this resources. So not tax dollars. They get a lot of Twitter people. They are not, they and it's not typically no. they're required so by law. So I want to clear that up to make sure that, that people understand. They have that. to reimburse. And his campaign is a hundred million dollars already for. But it costs somebody. So cost we're talking somebody about money. early <laughs> voters. People voted early, okay? So we're saying a 50% increase from 2014. Uh, talk a little bit about how that will affect tomorrow's outcome. Well, it depends on who those early voters are, and we're not quite sure about that. My hunch is that this revolution is being driven by women and by younger voters who are registering and voting for the first time. If that's the case, this could be very, very good for Democrats. Already we know that there's been a... A percentage surge, you know, in terms of the polling that's been done for some of the critical Democratic races. It looks like that uh, blue wall is being reestablished in places like Pennsylvania and so on. Charlie, I noticed today uh, a lot of the pundits out there talking, the Democrats seem awfully positive, and then they, they always say, but, you know, we were wrong in 2016. So. Yeah, I mean, look, there's a reason they play football games, there's a reason they have elections, and that's what we're going to do tomorrow. The momentum has begun a little bit to shift back to the Democrats in recent days, but a lot of that early voting was very pro-Republican. I mean, for the first several weeks of early voting in most states, the Republican numbers were way ahead of the Democratic numbers. They look like they've maybe caught up, but they're still not equal to the Republicans in terms of turnout. We have a hard time understanding that in Pennsylvania because we don't have early right. voting. But in the states where they do, big numbers as big as in presidential elections, and that's a big factor. I'll say something else about this election. The, the Democrats finally did something smart. They found a message and they were cohesive about it and they repeated it all over the country. And that was health care. And they demonized the Republicans by saying, you are going to threaten health care and you're going to take away those protections for uh, pre-existing conditions and so on. And, and that really caught on. That became the number one issue all across the country. It was a smart thing to do. Okay. All right. Charlie, Mark, thanks so much for being here. And of course, we'll see you again tomorrow night. And that's when it's going to be interesting because <laughs> tomorrow night counts. CBS 21, your place to be for everything as we get closer to this midterm election. We'll have the results as they come in tomorrow night and at, I mean, tomorrow night at 10 and 11.